you got to know the four pluses shock anytime you roll up on a patient with undifferentiated shock. Welcome back to Crit. This day number seven. Today we're talking about shock. Every time you go to a patient who's an undifferentiated shock, I want you to run through the four categories of shock. We have hypovolemic, obstructive, cardiogenic, and distributive. Let's go through all these one by one. Hypovolemic shock can either be non-hemorrhagic or hemorrhagic. Non-hemorrhagic can be from vomiting, diarrhea, fistulas, excessive diuretic use. And hemorrhagic is from bleeding, whether that's from trauma or over anticoagulation, whatever the case may be. Obstructive is a weird category. It's kind of like blood is having trouble getting into or out of the heart. So once you understand that framework, you can think about things like tension pneumothorax, cardiac tamponade, pulmonary embolism, superior vena cava syndrome, abdominal compartment syndrome. Some people put stenotic valves like mitral stenosis in the cardiogenic compartment of shock. I put it in the obstructive because blood can't get into or out of the heart. Cardiogenic shock is the next type and that could be a problem of left ventricular dysfunction, but it can also be a problem of right ventricular dysfunction. It could be a problem of incompetent valves like aortic regurgitation or mitral regurgitation or any regurgitant valvular lesions. And something that gets forgotten within cardiogenic shock is bradydysrhythmias or tachydysrhythmias. If you're going too slow or too fast, that can also affect your cardiac output. Because remember, cardiac output is stroke volume times heart rate. Finally, distributed shock is anytime you have vasoplegia, a decrease in your SVR. And the classic example of this is septic shock. But don't forget, you can have things like neurogenic shock, aphylactic shock, adrenal insufficiency, or situations where you have severe acidosis. Now, remember, you can have overlapping symptoms of shock. So it's always important to confirm with ultrasound by using your HIMAP protocol. But I can't stress enough how important it is to really think through what type of shock your patient is in. Evaluate vigorously with ultrasound because not all patients need two liters of volume. Some people have cardiogenic causes to their shock and some people have vasoplegic causes to their shock. So shock is not a one size fits all model. Did I miss any causes of shock? Please drop them in the comments. And that's why I always say, 